Very well then, let's settle down to it. It's only approaching six in the morning. It's not at all as if my body clock is completely out of whack. Why, hello. Welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Corona. Although, as you'll know, um, if you've been watching this series, we're not actually cooking with Corona. We are, in fact, merely cooking during the lockdown whilst Corona is upon us. That is, of course, unless you're watching this and you actually have COVID-19, in which case, of course, we are cooking with Corona in both respects of the connotations within that sentence. Now, Today, we are going to have a nice little American dish, or more specifically, a Southern American dish. In fact, the next two dishes I'm going to make are going to be American in style. The other is blueberry pie. I'll make that later, or I'll make it during, rather. Chronology in this thing is completely messed up. Never mind. So, although the Americans did not, of course, invent fried chicken per se, uh, that is, in the sense that they didn't invent the idea of putting a chicken into some oil. The recipe that came with it, the bread-like crumbs that went on the outside, is very uh, familiar. And we all know about the Colonel who came up with Kentucky Fried Chicken, or KFC. I'm not going to be following that recipe, although you can find um, variants of it online and speculations as to what's in it. I will go with typical, and I will also be making it with some of the more common things that, that would be served with it. So I'll have corn on the cob, I'll have some mashed potatoes, I've got some cornbread, I'm not going to show you how to make that. I might one day, but not today. And hopefully it's all going to turn out well. And if it does not, well, you can all have a laugh at my expense, particularly if you're from Southern America yourself. Now, of course, one of the major ingredients in American style of fried chicken is buttermilk. Now, buttermilk is not widely sold uh, in this country. You can find it in farm shops and such, but of course, with the current lockdown, uh, farm shops are few and far between unless you order. But if you don't have uh, buttermilk, what you can do, because the key to buttermilk is the acidity, you can substitute buttermilk by combining milk with cream of tartar, vinegar, a number of different other things. I'm going to use lemon simply because I'm going to need lemon elsewhere in this dish and I'm going to need it for the dessert I'm going to make later. So I've got a cup full of milk here then and then I have a tablespoon here and I'm going to squeeze this lemon juice into it and then put that into the milk. Just give that a stir. But I need if you're using buttermilk, you need three cupfuls of it, and I am going to do this twice more then. Put that in the bowl then. Two, three. All combining lemon juice with it. Now, this is an option, but if you like it spicy, and I do, then you can put some hot sauce in there. Now, I honestly thought that hot sauce was something that, again, could only be found in America, that I'd have to use Tabasco as well, if anything. But in fact, uh, I did find this uh, lovely Red Hot Original cayenne pepper sauce, which approximates it, I suppose. So, now one of the two recipes that I'm following, the stay-at-home chef, recommends half uh, a cup of the hot sauce I think I'm going to use about a quarter, because this is going to be a bit unpredictable. In that goes, then. Two teaspoons of salt should go in next. Probably no by now. Even after all this time, I don't seem to have any pure pepper, but I do have these peppercorns and turmeric. We're going to try some of that as well. So a teaspoonful of that. Just grate that in. Now I'm following two similar but different recipes in order to make this fried chicken. Rachel from the Stay at Home Chef does not call for eggs. Gina from the All Recipes website does. I'm going to risk it simply because I need to get rid of some eggs and it only requires one anyway so what's the worry? I'm sure you don't need me to show you what cracking an egg on a bowl looks like but I'll do it anyway. So open that out 
and give it a good stir and whisk. Round it goes then. See it has a nice pink colour. And it's rather symmetrical that I should add an egg to it because look, over here I potentially have its mother. You need to hear that, did you? Now, uh, looking at it, I see that some of the feathers are still here. I don't really want to fry those. So I'll give that a good pluck. Once they're featherless, I'm going to bung those in. By the way, I don't know if you noticed, but I have here five wings and one breast. So I think were I to do this again, I'd probably choose legs instead of wings. And I would probably choose breasts with skin on them. But no matter. No matter. I'm sure it'll still work. So we'll put this eventually into the mixture. Get that one that got away. And we're going to leave them in there and refrigerate them for about four hours. This is self-explanatorily, if indeed that is a word, which I doubt, not a vegetarian recipe. However, you can follow the instructions I'm giving here for the mashed potato recipe that I'm going to do and the uh, corn on the cob. And bear in mind that the sauce that I make for the chicken can also be used for uh, deep fried mushrooms, if you prefer, if you want to have a vegetarian option. Very well. This is nice and covered with cellophane. So very gingerly with my left hand, as I hold this camera, I'm going to put that in the fridge. There it shall stay for some time. Now, while that's cooling, we have to find a way of making the outer coating when it comes out. Now, one of the two recipes that I'm following calls for one cup of flour, the other calls for three cups of flour. I think I'm going to go with three simply because of the amount of chicken that I have. Let's sift out the first cup then. It may look as though I'm spilling it all over the floor. I promise you I'm not. I'm weighing it. That was one cup then. Here's the second. And three. Having sifted that out, we'll put that in the bowl. Hopefully it'll all fit. Yeah, it does. Well, I've got this little gadget here where you can grind dried garlic, like salt, into there. So I'm going to put some of that in. Two teaspoons or thereabout. And then I've got this, this here called onion salt. I'm going to put the same amount of that in. One teaspoon of oregano and also of paprika. And we're supposed to put some basil in, but I don't seem to be able to find any. What I do have is some garlic and rosemary and thyme. Should we try some of that? I think we should risk it. Just think of it as chicken and stuffing. In that goes then. I know to you it seems like I put the uh, chicken in the fridge just a few minutes ago, but what with all the reading of the recipe and measuring stuff out, it's almost one hour now, or half an hour at least. So, now that I've got this little concoction here, and by the way, the corn flour is what's going to give it the crispiness that it needs, I'm going to leave it and come back later. It's almost time to give the covering to the chicken. I've already got the chicken out of the fridge. The three hours has passed. And now I'm going to show you some of the things that it's traditional to have, from what I understand with southern fried chicken. One of them is mashed potatoes. And over here, I've just got some potatoes on, which I'm going to melt later. The other big thing we need frying, of course, is this lovely vegetable oil. Some people prefer peanut oil. We don't have it very widely here. I'm just, I don't have a deep fat fryer. What I do have is a very large saucepan here. Right, because I have a lot of the oil left over and because I also have a lot of the flour and spice mixture, instead of making a separate chicken dish, which I am gonna do anyway, I'm actually gonna use the remainder of the chicken that I had. So this time I'm going to do it pan fried. It's actually better this way because um, 
the mixture won't sort of go crusty and fall off, which there's it's danger of doing if you're deep frying it, as I basically did before. So here's the oil going in into this nice non-stick pan. Hope you are counting how many cupfuls that was. I certainly was. You can see I've got the remainder of the chicken in this mixture and that's another reason why I specifically chose this recipe because otherwise it would be a waste. Right now the oil is hot as opposed to boiling. I'm going to start flouring this chicken and I shall put it in wings first I think. Just coat that as well as I can. Gently put that in. And I'll just keep doing that. In the meantime I'm going to make the vegetables. Now it's corn on the cob of course since this is American style. Here I've got some uh, kale and lardons as well. That is going to help me make the gravy but it also will accompany it. Before I put the sweet corn on though, I'm going to squeeze in some lemon juice. It's the other half of the lemon that I use to make the milk uh, or buttermilk-like texture. I'd use more, I'd use a whole lemon uh, if I was making six uh, sweet corns the way one of the recipes calls for. Recipe also calls for castor sugar, but I only seem to have this damask sugar. So one tablespoon for another tablespoon for. We'll put that on to boil for about 10 15 minutes. Put that on as well. Now, to the extent that I'm capable, I'm going to make the gravy that goes with it. And it's not usual brown gravy, this is a white kind of gravy. I hope that I can do it. Everything else has gone quite smoothly so far, at least in terms of how it looks. Whether or to what extent it'll be edible will be another matter. Now the list of ingredients mentions uh, chicken broth. When you go to the instructions it mentions uh, chicken stock. Tell you what, we'll use both. So here's the chicken stock. Just put this in a cup. Now I'll ladle out some of the vegetable water from that, the kale and lardon. Put that in the cup, spill some on the floor of course. Two tablespoons of all of the oil then that I've just been using to uh, fry the chicken. Also two tablespoons full of the flour mixture, supposed to be just flour but this has got a few other things in it. Now the heat is on, we'll put that stock in, hmm, a bit lumpy, we'll give it a stir. If I am supposed to put chicken broth in there as well and I do it now, just half a cup full. We'll use a little bit, see how it works out, and see how much I've put in. It's not much. Everything for a further five minutes. A particular concentration on the gravy, since that is the biggest challenge in some ways, apart from the chicken. Because, you know, vegetables I'm relatively confident with. I know how to cook potatoes, I know how to cook uh, kale. It's just the same method, me method as cabbage, because it is a form of cabbage. Oh yes, and it calls for a cup of milk, but just for fun, why don't we add some of what's left of what I've made the chicken in. One cup it is. No, you can't see it, but uh, trust me, it's there. Have a look. See how I stir this in. I'm going to put this back in the fridge, I think, because there's still some chicken left. That has cooked for a further five minutes, like I said. Where are those potatoes? All right, you're supposed to add milk to the... a cup of milk to, to the mixture with the potatoes. Um, I was going to add the milk mixture with all the spices in it, but since I put it in the fridge and it's sealed at the back, I'll, I'll just add some ordinary milk. So milk... 
there's still some left. Now, for, to mash the potato, I'm going to use the same gadget that you will later see me use for the blueberry pie. A little butter, stir that in. I'm going to heat that up again on the core. All right, these are all cooking. I've heated up the oil a little bit. I'm going to turn these over now. Ah, oh, lovely. Very well, I've turned them over once again. Here you can see I've got some veg on and lardons for this batch. Before long, I shall get this out. You'll see how different it looks. You can already see how the sort of coating how different it looks compared to the other batch I made. Very well. I'll get uh, fish it out as before. Let it drain out on this tissue paper on the plate. And uh, after a while, I'll get this greenery out also. Here's the sweet, sweet corn, with sugar and lemon. Here's the greens, with the lardons, obviously. Here's the mashed potato, with which I may have overindulged. By May, I mean definitely. And here, the gravy. We'll just pour this over. Right. Let's try some. Be a good boy and eat the greens first. Hmm. That actually is better. Hmm infinitely better, far closer to the sort of crispy outer bit that you'd expect to taste in fried chicken were you having it at a restaurant or something. Not sure whether, you know, a person from Southern America would recognise it, but still, I recommend the pan fried version I just made if you really want to duplicate what I just did. Unless, of course, you don't really like the crumbs on it, in which case go ahead with the deep fat frying. Uh, there's no real healthy way of having it, unless you alter the oil a bit, maybe. But, yes, for taste, for sheer taste, I recommend the pan fried. So, by all means use the ingredients I used for the coating and the milk, or use buttermilk instead as I would have done had I had access to it and use the pan-fried version that I the pan-fried method that I just used in order to cook it. So, ta-ta!